insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 18, The P Word, part one. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my lovely and talented co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Madison? Pretty good. So this is kind of a special episode this week. It's actually a two-part series. Our very first one. Our very first one. We'll be doing part one this week, and next week's episode will be our continuation and final episode in the two-part series. So for the purpose of the show, the P word really takes on two meanings for us here. This week's uh, discussion on the P word, we're going to be talking about puberty. Uh, We'll talk about what it is, uh, some facts about it. We'll talk about what the stages of puberty that girls go through. Uh, Then there are some physical changes that both boys and girls go through we'll talk about. And we will talk about some of the emotional changes that uh, teens are challenged with going through puberty. And uh, then we'll wrap with uh, your final thoughts and shout outs. And then next week, our continuation, we'll tackle getting your period for the first time. And for that, we're going to be bringing in a subject matter expert, uh, because clearly I'm not a subject matter expert on that topic. Clearly. So, shall we get started? We shall. All righty. So, the first thing that we're going to talk about here is uh, what is puberty? So, for this, uh, I went out to a website called medicine.com or medicinenet.com. Um, and uh, this is a fairly clinical description of what it is. And, and let me read it and then I'll get your thoughts on it. So it says puberty is the period during which growing boys and girls undergo the process of sexual maturation. Puberty involves a series of physical stages or steps that lead to the achievement of fertility and the development of the so-called secondary sex characteristics, the physical features associated with adult males and females, such as the growth of pubic hair. Uh, While puberty involves a series of biological or physical transformations, the process can also have an effect on the psychosocial and emotional development of the adolescent. There's a lot of big words there. Huh? That sounds sounds kind of kind of scary and scientific. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what to you? Describe to me and to the audience what puberty is to you. Well, for me, puberty is a series at which young adolescents, such as myself, go through physical and emotional changes, slowly grow going into eventually becoming um, men and women instead of just kids. Right. Instead of just boys and girls. Okay, so you've got a very firm idea of what puberty is, uh, which is helpful considering you're kind of in the middle of it right now. Pretty much. So we'll we'll take the clinical idea of, of what puberty is and we'll take yours and we'll sort of keep those in mind as we go through the rest of the of the things we have to talk about today. Okay? Yep. Awesome. So as mentioned in the definition, and we're going to talk about just some puberty facts at this point. As mentioned in the definition, 
Puberty is a period of sexual maturation where you're maturing into adulthood. Um, for, for both boys and girls, you're achieving fertility, the ability to reproduce, basically. Um, and that causes significant physical changes to your body. Uh, this is a time, uh, the time when puberty begins varies greatly among individuals. Uh, however, puberty usually occurs in girls between ages 10 and 14 and between the ages of 12 and 16 in boys. Um, and you're, you're right in the middle of that 10 to 14 range. Now, the interesting takeaway from that fact is you look at those numbers and immediately you look and see boys reach puberty later than girls do. Um, have you noticed differences in boys and girls in your class while you're going through this? Well, actually, yes. I've noticed that the girls seem more matured than the, than the men do because... The men act like idiots, and the more the girls act, actually seem more mature than the boys. Mm -hmm. And right now, the boys are actually just, most of the boys are actually just turning 12. So I'm pretty sure by the end of the summer, they'll probably be going through pu their, uh, uh, pu puberty. puberty. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so you're going to start seeing, you know, the boys are going to start acting differently. And this is kind of what I told you. Uh, a few weeks ago when, when you had some issues at schools that, you know, the boys haven't hit that stage yet. You know, a lot of them haven't. And now they're going to hit it and they're going to start to act a little bit differently. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that you notice, and we'll talk about it a little bit more, is because you're hitting puberty at different times, one of the things about puberty is how you grow. So you're going to go through growth spurts. So you may notice that you're taller than a lot of the boys your same age, because you started those growth spurts earlier than they did. So that's kind of a distinguishing factor. So the next thing it says is that both genetic and environmental factors are involved in the timing of puberty. So depending on when mommy and daddy went through puberty, that would affect when you do. Um, when they say environmental factors, it could be uh, the climate that you live in. A lot of it has to do with um, sunlight, you know, and, and in northern climates, puberty occurs at a different time than in southern climates. Um, and it could be uh, as much as, you know, uh, pollution in the air and how your body reacts to that. So there's a lot of different things that, that go into triggering when you, when you have, you go through puberty. Um, Another interesting fact is that body fat or body composition plays a role in regulating the onset of puberty too. So girls who are carrying more body fat than, than uh, other girls, that extra body fat causes the chemicals in your body to react differently and it may alter the timing that you uh, wind up having, uh, the time that you actually enter puberty. Um, so that's another factor. So some girls, like you probably know that, that you know, all girls aren't going through puberty at the same time. But there's just a lot of factors that go into that. So it's, you know, body composition is another one of those. Yeah. Um, remember how you said that most girls, when they hit puberty, they hit it from 10 to 14? Right. I think I actually hit it when I was nine. You you probably did. You hit it fairly early, much earlier than daddy was comfortable with. Mm -hmm. um, puberty may be accompanied by emotional and mood changes. Have you experienced any of that? Yep, I have. A little bit of that, huh? No nope lot. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that a little bit more, but yeah, that's one of the things, you know, if, you know, if there's kids out there that are listening who, who are approaching this age and haven't gone through it yet, um, it's something that, that, that hits you pretty hard and you're not really ready for it. And there's, there's rushes of emotion, like kind of give a little, little explanation of what you've run into, sweetie. Well, I'll give an example. So let's just say you're playing one of your favorite video games and you're at a very high level and you're like super happy, amped up, you're ready to win. Then all of a sudden you die. And then 
your emotions are triggered and you all of a sudden become angry, you want to start screaming at the game. I know I've had that happen a few times before. In a situation where a situation where a week ago you would have reacted completely differently. Yeah. And it's it's overwhelming. You can't control it and it surprises you sometimes. Mhm. And it kind of scares you sometimes. But, you know, it's one of those things where it's a matter of adjustment, right? I mean, your body at that point your body's producing a lot of chemicals a lot of hormones and they can cause all kinds of different emotions that you normally would have control over and you don't um, so for those that it's going through it, it's normal it may be uncomfortable it may be frustrating but it's normal you know everyone goes through it um there are some medical conditions, and I don't have them listed here, but there are some medical conditions that could could um, change when you go through puberty um, because of all these chemical changes in your body. Uh, one of the ones that I had uh, noticed in my research was uh, diabetes. Um, it can affect your blood sugar levels. It can affect asthma. It can affect any number of things. Um, so it's important that uh, when you're going through this, um, and this is more a message for the parents out there that, you know, you keep an eye on the kids, you know, always keep them, check on them, make sure that they're okay. Make sure if they're feeling strange, um, take it, take it seriously and make sure that you're keeping an eye on it to make sure nothing serious is happening. Mm -hmm. uh, and keep up with your regular doctor's visits because your doctor is going to know best for you. Yep. So. So we'll talk about some stages of puberty for girls coming up. So in most girls, the first signs of pu puberty um, is the beginning of breast development, uh, which can occur at an average age of approximately 11 years old. Um, and this can cause some girls to feel rather self-conscious because when it, once it becomes visible, people start to have concerns about body image. How did you how did you deal with that, sweetheart? Well, I actually didn't receive. I actually received mine when I was nine. Right. Or at least I started noticing. Yeah. Um, I immediately decided to tell mommy because I knew she'd probably know about it. Of course, I had like. No idea because I really didn't have much talk about puberty at the time. Um, but she did tell me and she told me not to be ashamed of it, even though I was kind of ashamed of it at the time. She was a beautiful thing and that um, everyone would go through it and I wasn't the first one. And that made me relieved and later on I started getting used to it and I wasn't really ashamed of it. Yeah, and the important thing is it isn't anything to be ashamed of. It's a part of natural growth, you know, of, of becoming a, a young woman. Um, but what did you go through as far as challenges? How did your, did your wardrobe change? Did your daily routine change? Well, my wardrobe did change. I had to start wearing bras. Of course, at the beginning, it was very uncomfortable. I was not used to it. But eventually, I started getting used to it. Every time my mom would make me wear one, I always hated it because it was so uncomfortable. Now I wear one pretty much every day. So now, now, when you went to buy bras the first time, did mommy take you to do that? Yeah. To sort of describe some of what the experience was like with that so that other girls know. Well, it was a little strange, of course. I mean, I had never actually tried on one. And when I first tried one on, it was actually kind of uncomfortable. But mommy said it was actually meant to be comfortable, and I didn't understand it at the time. But after I got used to it, I started realizing it actually does keep you more comfortable, which is why I wear one pretty much every single day now. Okay, very good. So in girls, the growth of pubic hair begins next, uh, followed by the growth of hair in the armpits. Um, a minority girls uh, develop uh, pubic hair prior to breast development, though. Uh, again, this is one of those things that it's it's a natural part of the process, um, and it's a result of 
the the chemicals in your body. Um, your thoughts on on that? Well, I would definitely say it's true because I noticed I was getting hair in places I didn't have hair before. So, and that was after I had gotten my breasts. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I would ha- definitely agree that my pubic hair started right after I started growing my breasts. So with that in mind, was there any significant changes in your personal grooming or your personal hygiene? Well, I did have to start using deodorant every single day. Um, and I ha- and Mommy always told me to scrub really hard, mm-hmm. and which I did. Yeah, and it's important because your hygiene demands do change as a result. Um, and the deodorant is a very good point because while boys and girls both use it, boys will wind up having to probably use something a little bit stronger because there's certain chemicals that boys produce that do have more odor to them. Uh, so boys just need to be aware of that. Um, the onset of menstruation, getting your first period. Uh. So this usually happens, this is the next step, this usually happens uh, later than your other physical changes, and it usually occurs around two and a half years after the onset of puberty. Um, You know, spoiler for next week, you've already had your first period, so you've started your menstrual cycles. Mm -hmm. Um, Not to spoil everything for next week's discussion, but tell us how it was the first time that you went through that? Was it scary? Was it was it concerning? Well, by the time I had gotten it, I had already known a lot of information about growing and having a period. And I always wanted, and I was always like a little nervous whenever I would, if, and I was always self-conscious about when I would get it. And like, I just thought the concept was a little weird. I mean, I did, I, didn't feel ashamed of it. I was just kind of scared of it. And when I did realize I had it, unfortunately, mommy was not at the house. You were the only one, and you and me. And when I realized it, I my eyes teared up, and I screamed for you. You called mommy, and she gave you directions. Yeah, yeah, because that was not something that I was prepared for. Yeah, that was not fun <laughs> at all. But, which is why we're going to have a subject matter expert next week when we go in-depth in the discussion. Yep. So the last stage for puberty for girls is a regular pattern of ovulation, your, uh, which obviously involves your menstrual cycle. Um, this corresponds to the achievement of fertility, uh, usually develops rapidly once a girl begins her menstrual uh, periods. Uh, however, girls uh, who have later onset menstruation after age 13 tend to have lower rates of regular ovulation in the years following the onset of menstruation. Uh, So not all girls um, start their periods at the same time, nor do they have them with the same regularity as as all girls. It's important to mention this because that's normal. There's nothing unusual about that. Um, There's nothing to be worried about with that if it does happen to you. Um, Studies have shown that one half of adolescent girls <clears throat> excuse me, who first begin to menstruate after age 13 will not ovulate regularly over the next four and a half years. Well, that's half girl, half the girls out there. So that's perfectly normal if that's what happens to you. And I don't want to gla- uh, gloss over um, menstruation and, and the period and all that stuff. Um, I just wanted to go touch on what the stages of puberty were for girls We'll go into more detail on that later, and 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 uh, next week we'll go into that and, and talk about it in more depth. So there are other physical changes of puberty that both boys and girls go through, and uh, these are pretty pretty normal for most adolescents. Um, and I'm sure you can sympathize with some of these. The first one is your growth spurt. So you've gone through several growth spurts now, have you not? I have, and I think I'm in one now because my feet really hurt. 
Yeah, and that's sort of what happens. Explain to us what it's like. Well, when you know you're getting a growth spurt, you'll start to notice that your feet tend to hurt. And the reason for that being is because your legs are growing. And if you start feeling sore in any other part of your body, that part of your body is growing. So you can probably tell when you're going to have a growth spurt because you'll start feeling the pain. And yes, it's agonizing. Honestly, I've kind of learned to deal with it, even though it still hurts. And right now, it kind of hurts now. So I'm not immune to it. You'll probably never get immune to it. But I mean, it's something you'll just get used to and you'll get used to having. And it's not unusual. Right. So during the growth spurt, you have rapid increases in height, um, which, you know, usually accompanies puberty for most people. Not everyone goes through it. Uh, the rapid increase in height typically lasts for two to three years, statistically speaking. Uh, and about 17 to 18, about 17 to 18 percent of your adult height is attained during puberty. Just pretty impressive, considering, you know, pub puberty typically lasts four, maybe five years, and you're getting almost twenty percent of your height during that time. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the increase in height affects both your trunk and your limbs. Uh, growth in the limbs usually happens first, and this is the pain that you're talking about with your legs. The growth spurt characteristically occurs earlier in girls than boys, which is why you probably found you were taller than some of the boys in class. Yeah. And the growth spurt, uh, with girls having a growth spurt approximately two years prior to boys on average. In girls, the growth spurt typically precedes the onset of menstruation. So did you start having your growth spurt before you had your first period? Yep. Yeah. See, that's, that's you're pretty typical then. Um, so bone growth and mineralization is another one of the physical changes. Uh, so puberty is accompanied by growth of bones and the increase in bone density in both boys and girls. It's that growth in your bones that typically causes the problems and the problems usually manifest in your joints. As your, as your bones start to grow, it starts to put strain on the ligaments and the joints in your body as they start to stretch and and compensate for that so that's usually where that comes from okay um, in girls bone mineralization peaks around the time of your menstrual periods start um, and studies have shown that uh, the bone width increases first um, but during this time period where your the bone density is is changing this is when you start to see kids, like this time of your life, you'll start to see kids breaking bones, playing sports and stuff like that. It's not because they're reckless or, or it's dangerous. It's because the bone density is changing so much that they're more prone to breakage. Uh, so it's important to kind of be careful about that sort of thing. Good thing I don't play sports. It's, it's a good thing you don't play sports. Right? I don't do anything rough. <clears throat> That's good. But, you know, people break their legs stepping off the curb the wrong way, so you still have to be careful. I know. Um, so weight changes. That's another one of the changes. Uh, adolescent girls develop a greater proportion of body fat than boys with redistribution of the fat toward the upper and lower portions of the body, which leads to what is often considered a curvy complexion, a curvy appearance in girls rather than boys um that's part of the natural thing that, that's where your body redistributes itself so it's fairly normal um and and girls that are more athletic can tend to i don't you know i don't want to say fight it off but they can resist that natural change longer than those who are less less athletic um, while boys have an increase in muscle fat, their muscle growth is faster and muscle mass is heavier, denser than fat, 
So as a result, their, a lot of their weight gain comes from the muscle mass that they put on. Uh, by the end of puberty, boys have a muscle mass of about one and a half times greater than that of comparably sized girls because boys' bodies just develop muscle mass faster. Um, so, again, when we talk about athletics, that's why you see some of the distribution of sports that the, the boys are playing versus what the girls are playing. The girls tend to be playing more... Uh, aerobic style games where they're running more and it's less about the physical body strength. That's not to say that girls can't do those things or that the boys can't do the aerobic ones. It all depends on your body composition and, and what you enjoy. Um, but a lot of that is driven by puberty and how your body comes out of puberty and what kind of shape you're in, how your body's composed. Uh, have you seen any changes in your weight or your body composition that has been dramatic? Yeah, I kind of have. I mean, I remember like one time when I went to the doctors, um, I noticed that I had, I was kind of heavier. Right. And I was like way heavier than the last time. And I'm pretty sure that was the stage of puberty. I just thought I was getting fat, to be honest. Yeah, and you don't have much body fat on you. I think a lot of it, like you've you've increased your height significantly to the point that, you know, it's not much of a competition with mommy anymore. Nope. <laughs> so, but a lot of the weight comes from your bone density too, where you're increasing your bone density. Mm-hmm. So, a lot of changes, a lot of changes. Yep. Emotional changes of puberty in boys and girls. Um, is this something that you've encountered uh, since you've entered puberty? Yep, numerous times, almost every day in my life. How are you coping with them? Well, it's still difficult even all the years that I've had them, but I'm definitely much better, especially thanks to the podcast. I've definitely learned to gain control of myself and not lash out at people that's good that's very important so both boys and girls can experience emotional changes that accompany the myriad physical changes of puberty uh, which you obviously can attest to Uh, these changes are not all the same for all adolescents changes can occur in the way a teen responds to family or friends or use him or herself Uh, Have you started to look at yourself, or do you look at yourself differently now since you've you've started puberty? Well, yes, I do, but it's mainly in good ways. I say I'm I'm becoming more mature, and eventually I'll become I'm becoming a woman, and um, and um, just basically all positive stuff about the future and maturing and stuff. That's good. Yeah, you have a much broader outlook on things today than you did a year ago. I can tell you that much. Mm -hmm. Uh, Many adolescents experience mood swings, anxiety, confusion, and sensitivity. Uh, Are you going through any of that? Yeah, I do feel as though I'm going through that. Mood swings, definitely, like, one point I'll be okay, and next point I'm, like, so angry I want to punch something. Um, Anxiety... I definitely would say I do panic about certain things, especially after a day of ELA because we're hitting pretty hard topics in there and I fear of things, of things that might actually happen to me. So, yeah. What hard topics do you hit in ELA? Um, like stuff about death, the Holocaust, um, and dystopian societies. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. That's cheerful stuff. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so moving on. Uh, not all emotional changes of puberty are related to negative thoughts or feelings of being upset. Um, have you had non-negative emotional uh, feelings. Um, can you please describe? 
Um, have you f- found? Have you had a crush on anyone? Um. And you don't have the name names. Yeah. Yeah, but those those feelings are part of puberty as well. I and mean, now I really don't have a crush on anyone. Honestly, right. I'm pretty sure I'll just be single right well, now. For now, and that's fine. But the feelings that you didn't have a year ago that you start having now are as a result of the chemical changes in your body as well. So, yeah, we have mood swings. We have emotional outbursts. We may seemingly cry for no reason at all, but some of the feelings that we get, you know, you may become attached to your, uh, you know, you may become more um, friendly with your friends. You may have a, a tighter bond with them. You may have um, a shared uh, misery, we'll say, with them. And a lot of that stuff has to do with, you know, the emotions that are not just all negative. You get some positive, I guess, is the important thing. Yeah. Um, Let's see. While some emotional changes are a normal part of puberty, it's important to seek medical help if these emotional changes are unusually severe, affect day-to-day functioning, or result in thoughts of harming oneself or others. Now, again, I want to, I want to, you know, put a note out to the parents out there of adolescents that it's vitally important that you have an open dialogue that your your children feel comfortable talking to you. Um, you know, there are days that you come home from school that you're cranking. You just want to go up to your room. And those are the days that, that we typically stop you to make sure, hey, what's wrong? What happened? Um, tell us what happened. Oh, well, so-and-so said this, or, or the kids were loud and I couldn't do my homework or something like that. And it, those couple of minutes of exchange allow mommy and daddy to figure out if one of these problems is severe. And if it's something that's really inconsequential but just rubbed you the wrong way we're okay um but if there's something out there you know there's certain signs that we look for to see if it's something that's more severe and that's what i caution the parents for you know have you ever found any days that i said you might have sensed that there have been a couple of days that um i had concerns and if I have concerns, what we'll do is we'll sit down and we'll talk a little bit more. Like the other night when mommy came downstairs after you went to bed and told me, you know, that you were having some issues at school that day, it, it was impos- important for me to come up and talk to you at that point in time and for me to understand what those issues were. And even though we didn't solve the problems for you, you know, it's important for you to know you're not dealing with them alone. Nobody should have to deal with these kind of issues alone because going through puberty, dealing with uh, school drama, dealing with you know bullies or whatever else you're dealing with on a day-to-day basis, nobody should deal with that by themselves. That's what mommy and daddy are here for. And we may not be able to solve the problems for you, but we may be able to point you in the right direction to find a solution or at least be there you know, so that you got someone to lean on when you need it. Um, and sometimes that's what it takes. That's what my mom did for me when I went through all this stuff myself. Um, so it's important to know that you've got the support there. And, and I credit the parents that stand by their kids like that and make sure that their kids are taken care of. It's important to do health checks physically and mentally during this time. Because a lot changes, right? Mm-hmm. So um, that was all I, I, I had for... Uh, this will come back with uh, a couple of questions and answers, I think, and then we'll, we'll wrap things up. So I've, I've exhausted all of the material that I have here, but I wanted to ask you, you're roughly two years, three years into puberty right now. Mm-hmm. 
has it been a difficult road for you and do you find that you're 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 coping with it now well yes and yes actually um in the beginning it was definitely difficult for me i have to be honest it wasn't something i felt as though i was ready for but as i got older and i matured and i learned more about all of the stages of puberty i learned to cope with everything and now i'm pretty sure i'm fine with it that's awesome i'm glad to hear that what do you think was the most difficult thing that you struggled with early on um i guess all the sudden changes and that i wasn't very introduced to it at the time i didn't like have the videos at the time to watch that we watch now ever because we because I started in third grade and we watched the videos in fourth grade and mommy kind of had to teach me then, mm -hmm. but I didn't fully, but she didn't really tell me too much about it until I started going through it, so. So the material that you saw in school, the videos and whatever lectures or anything, did you find, while it came later than it was convenient, did you find that that material was helpful, and do you think it would have been helpful if you had known what that information was beforehand? Yes and yes. The information was definitely helpful, and it would have been better to know about it when I was going through it because I was just confused at the time, and I really didn't know too much, and I was kind of scared for the future. Okay. That's all fair points. Um. If you had to give advice to someone who hasn't started going through puberty yet, what would it be? I would just say try to prepare yourself and don't freak out. It's completely natural. Um, everyone goes through it, and eventually you'll go through it too. Um, and um, make sure you have people to support you. I'm lucky enough to have both of my parents to have support me and all my friends who have also support me. So make sure you're around positive people who will help you through one of the most difficult times of your life. And very well said. I'll tell you that right off the bat. Um, where do you find yourself still struggling today to, to cope with it? With some occasions, yes. I would definitely say, like, I'm still having trouble controlling my mood swings. I mean... I'm good enough to where I won't ever lash out at anyone, but I might give people an attitude and I might scream at technology. Now, is there anything that would help you now if you had it? Well, right now I'm able, if I get really angry, I'm able to write down my thoughts, read over it, and then probably throw out the piece of paper I can punch a wall, count backwards from 10, and just try to ignore the people. But unfortunately, ignoring them is a little harder than, than it really needs to be. If I'm able to actually ignore the people, I'm pretty sure I'd be able to cope with my emotions better. Okay. But you're getting better over time, though. Yeah. So, okay. Awesome. Well, we'll... Uh We'll come back with your final thoughts and your shout outs. I turn it over to you, my dear. Well, I just want to say for anyone who hasn't gone through puberty like before, prepare yourself. Make sure you're around positive people who will always support you through the most difficult part of your life. I can definitely say it's been difficult for me, but... Thanks to all the positive people I've been around, I've been able to help, it's helped me cope, cope with it and all the good resources I've been around to help me learn about it. If you're already going through these stages and you haven't quite learned to cope with it, I'd suggest some of the methods that I've gone through. I would definitely suggest writing down your thoughts because it'll take you time to think about what you're gonna write and afterwards, you can read it over, think about what you thought. And I'm pretty sure the next day, you'll probably just laugh it off saying, hey, look how ridiculous I was, because I do that. Also, try to distract yourself from 
the issue at hand. And when you are going through all the physical changes, I'd recommend buffing up your hygiene, talking to people who have already gone through it, and find people who are just like you. And I'm pretty sure um, th with time you'll learn to cope with it just as I have. Awesome. All very good suggestions and very good thoughts. Any shout-outs this week? Yes, I would like to give a shout out to all the people who have supported me through this difficult challenge. Um, mainly you and mommy, you guys have helped me a lot. And all the people who have educated me about puberty, um, thank you. And all my friends who have been there su to support me through my emotional changes and my physical changes. Thank awesome. you all. Awesome. Very good. Well, I think that about does it for this week. Sure. Um, remember, we will be back next week with part two. Mm -hmm. uh, we will have some help with that one because I'm in over my head with it. Yeah. Uh, another, uh, just a programming note that uh, starting last week, we started posting our show notes to the website. So you can visit us at www.insightsintothings.com. Click on this week's show. You will get a audio link, a video link, subscription links to both. You will get a transcript of uh, today's podcast. And you will also get the show notes that we worked off of here that includes all of the links that we have. All of our contact information is also there. Any parting words, dear? I just want to say thank you all for watching and make sure to check out part two. All righty. Thanks for watching this week, and we'll talk to you all next week in part two. See ya.